This um, box, this bottle, will last like, you know how big my work is? Huge? That will last me six months. Mm. Just You just need a, a few drops. It's just incredible. Wait, where is your work? Did you bring it in? Or? I told people to Google me. <laughs> oh, okay, yes. okay. Okay, and then I always say that, you know how in the Bible it says, oh, the first day you got created the dark and the light, huh? So on the first day you got created <laughs> paint, then the second brushes, and the third rags, okay? I always have my rags in my hand because a lot of times it's not what I do here, it's how much paint I took off to control my brush. So we use a little bit of water. We could use turf if it was a room where we have a good ventilation, but water will do. This is a water-soluble oil. Oh, water oil. And I'm just going to use our raw umber. And I'm just loading the brush at the very tip so I can draw with it. And right now, what I'm going to do is trace over my lines. And as I'm doing this, it's a chance for me to correct anything I don't like. So now I can slow down and really say exactly how far his face sticks out, or if I did anything wrong. This is only to get me started and to be a little bit more confident. But I'm not married to my original lines. This is a chance, always a chance to perfect something, right? If I dip it a little bit into my oil, the paint will get a little bit more fluidy, kind of, it will run nicely. It'll feel good when you touch. It'll also make it a little lighter, more transparent. And you notice how far it carries, and it's mixing with some of that vine charcoal that we have underneath. So it's actually making my color a little bit more gray, which I love, because remember we're painting that dead layer with very muted color palette today? that will disappear next week. So I'm already setting up, I'm thinking light and dark, so I'm making this hair a little darker. You see how quickly I did that? And I'm adding the ear that I forgot to blow up. So already I have a little darkness here. Now I'm using a little water. I block my brush. I use the same brown, notice that. And now I'm going to model this forehead and leave all of this light. So immediately, I'm getting front and sides. I'm thinking that the forehead is round, so this line is round so that I can feel the dimension. Notice if I didn't even draw the line underneath the, the, the this will still, the charcoal underneath is still there. It's not going to disappear and it's going to help me. So I can quickly actually start modeling to darkness. So if I mix a little bit into my burnt sienna, let's mix a little bit of blue. Like it. Rather than black. And this is going to be maybe too runny, that's why I have my rag here. This should be darker. And I'm going to take a little lotus and crimson in there. I want to paint that shift. Do you see it? The shift in value, right? And then it gets lighter again, so I can blot. And this can be painted lighter here. I'll go back to the lighter color, maybe a little bit of ochre. I'm not using any white yet. Just transparency. I'm painting really transparent, almost like watercolor, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm really setting my values first. Now here I have a lot of charcoal, so it's becoming darker by mixing with the charcoal underneath. You see that? I almost didn't have to do anything to my paint. Mm. And then I'm leaving this lighter. Do you remember that line that I drew? Now I know exactly where to stop. Here I'll make it a little darker. 
Because I want to see that transition, right? The logos are in the crimson. It gives nice shadows, beautiful shadows. Starting from the core shadow, and then blending out. You see how the painting is starting to separate? Why would you choose to pull the blue in in some areas and the red in others? Um, right, is that just what you're seeing from the photo? I'm really not thinking too much of color. I just want darkness and experiment to get used to my paint and see how the different colors, because each type of paint will, right, every brand will mix it slightly different. So I'm experimenting and seeing you could stick with the same mixture that you started, or you could start adding a little bit to experiment. I'm really not thinking color, I'm thinking light and dark. Okay, like the so pastel. I wanted to see if the lizard and crimson will do a nice dark line, which is good. And then maybe it's two reds, so I can come in with a little green and blue just to tame it. But it's only in terms of light and dark that I'm thinking. Maybe it needs a little oil. I want that dark line. Right? That's what I'm looking for. I want to push it in, right? I want to push this in and make it go away and darker. So I'm going to work this very quickly all the way down to the neck because it's not separate. And remember, light and dark does not discriminate. It does not say I stop here because now it's the neck, right? It goes all the way from the top of the head down to your toe. Here the neck is the last thing we see, so that's what... And I'm even going to take the shirt and use the shirt to set everything off here, darker, right? That's gonna help me see better. You see that? It kind of sets immediately the, and now I can even take that green and blue and alizarin and start setting this like this. I notice that this is as dark as over there, the shirt. And now I'm just gonna work a little bit on one eye and a little bit on the nose, just to show you how to proceed. Just because you're going smaller, doesn't mean anything changed. The nose is like this, only on the smaller area. So I'm still thinking front, side, core shadow, and dividing it. So I'm just going to do it exactly the same as we did the forehead, and the chin, and the forehead. Right? I'm not thinking I'm painting nose now. I'm just painting a smaller shape, that's all. And I don't mind if it goes a little greener or a little red or just a tiny little shift. I just mind that it looks the right value, right? I feel like it's so easy to <clears throat> want to start doing the, the really eyes does. first and you, it just seems like you're waiting. Yes, because if you do the eyes first, and they won't look at, attached. And you'll always be struggling against them. If you do them last, it's like a reward. It's like telling the kid, you'll have right. your broccoli, like your chocolate after you eat your broccoli. So do you see how I push that? Okay, do you see how this is all together? Now the nose with the same thinking, right? And I can introduce a transition light here. Now you know why I did that line, so I can quickly go in and paint this, right? See how that guided me? Here it's guiding me. Yeah. You see that? Boom. Very quickly. See the light shifting here, right? Boom. And when it gets like this, that means it needs a little bit of more oil. So now watch the difference. You see how the paint started going beautifully? Just a little drop will change. And if, for instance, I made this darker, your red, you can also just blot it out a little bit. Shayna, we have a question on our yeah. live. Someone's asking, isn't it easier to use a mid-tone paper instead of white? It is a mid-tone. We have prepared our 
um, canvases with a pearlescent gray. So if I was to put white next to it, right, you could see the difference. Mm. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to go Thank into you. the eye for a second. So we remember that the, in the eye, Good for that question. <laughs> right? Um, in the eye, everything is dark, right? The white of the eye, look how dark it is, even here, right? Look at the white compared to this. So I'm going to model it the same way as I did everything else. I wanted to show you big areas first. But now I can, I put my hand down to rest it so it doesn't jump. I'm not using white yet. I'm reserving the white still later. You guys okay with watching a little bit more? Just two more minutes? Yeah. Before you paint? I feel like it's going to give you a good start. I know you're probably itching to paint it dark. So even though a lot of it disappeared, I still <coughs> know where things are, so I can come back in a moment and pick it up. I'm sort of leaving the drawing underneath to guide me. Now his eye, for some reason I imagine his eyes are kind of hazel. Am I wrong? What color do you guys eyes? Hazel? Yeah. That's what it feels like. So I'm going to start with kind of a neutral hazy color. So here's a chance where I actually don't see it in the photograph, in my source, but I'm going to start inventing because the source is just to guide me and inspire me, but not to control me, right? I'm not painting this to look like that. I'm using that to help me paint something else, something that I want to create. So now I'm going to use that blue and that green. And you know what, if you want to buy a little black, that's fine. But if I use green, blue, and alizarin, it will make a very nice dark. And now I can draw with this. Can you take another live question? Yes. It's why not lay in the dark so that you can get the other values set? We are doing that. <laughs> I, that's what I thought. <laughs> we're laying in the darks, and as we're laying in the darks, uh, we're also modeling dark to light. So if there, was a, um, if there was a value chart where this would be white and this would be black and everything in between are grays, we are going from 1 to 10, basically. We are in the range of 5 to 10, and we're putting all the 5 to 10s, all the darks first. And then we're using about four or three for a middle tone, and we're reserving all the one to three, all the lights, for later, for the next step. So that's exactly what we're doing. So do you see how I'm actually painting dark into dark? Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to destroy, at this point, all the canvas showing through. I want it all done in that eye. I want to add a little bit more foil, poppy seed. I don't want any canvas showing through in my eye. And now I can actually use a little water and even a clean brush. And I can lift some of the lights, almost like a kneaded eraser. You see that? I need a little light. You see that? I can make things lighter. You see that? Okay, so now I will take a smaller brush and I need a little drawing here for the iris. I don't want it to be totally drawn out like a cartoon, but I do want to feel a sense of the roundness. You see that? Just a little suggestion. And then we notice that there's a separation and a little white showing of the eye, right? 
and then the inside and the tear duct. See how the eye is starting to appear a little bit? If I was to rush, I don't want you to do this on this uh, right away, maybe towards the end of the class, but if I was to take a little highlight with white, maybe a little bit of maple's yellow and a little bit of oil, if I want it to be fluid, and just dab right in here and interrupt the pupil and the iris. You see how immediately it makes it look like the light penetrating? And then remember it escapes at a diagonal, so I put a little highlight below. You see how it animates, right? If I was to rush, I don't want you to do it necessarily and put just a little feeling of his brow, for instance, right? The eye will very quickly will start coming right, a light. Now I can take a little bit of white and maple's yellow with my, some of my muddy colors here. I don't even know what they are anymore, but I'm going to use all of them. And I could start modeling some of the lighter areas in the dark. You see that? Now I know exactly where to go. I can lift the eyebrow right here. You see how it's too dark and too low? I can lift it now and correct it. That can make it lighter here on the side to show that this is our side. Just to show that this is the side, right? If I was to go into the nose, I could start modeling the roundness. Remember that bowl of the nose, right? Now I have a little white on my brush. You can see now that we do have an underpainting because the whites really stand out, right? That's why we underpainted the canvas. Let's see here. Painting white. Very quickly it starts animating. I was to rush a little just to show you effect. Look how white stands against the middle tone, right? So ultimately, will any of the mid-tone canvas be left? It should be, by the end of today, disappearing. So that's our goal, is to lay all of that color, that layer, and to make the canvas disappear. So I showed you in the eye, now I'm going to show you very quickly in the nose how it's going to disappear. So I usually separate the brushes. So if I'm going to paint something white or dark, I'll use two or three brushes to separate it. So one brush will be reserved for dark, one for light. So you don't struggle cleaning it all the time. Okay, let's quickly get rid of the of our canvas here. Can I help you um, some more red, please? Because this is saturated. Now I can, and, and this is a good example. Look at how much I was wiping, right? That's how I control my brush. Half of the painting is in here, right? Very important, because I would be struggling if I would be putting too much paint on too early. Thank you so much. And I take two, three rags, because I really want to be able to blot through. And sometimes, at this point, we can paint very thinly to get rid of that gray. It will still shine through. And here it's a, it's a kind of a mustache, so I can even leave some of the texture, right? I can begin thinking about that hairy quality right? of my brush leaving that. Do you, do you use these watercolor or water solubles often? Only when I travel or in places where I can't use the regular oils where it's not ventilated, or if I was pregnant, or somebody had, an, my student had an allergy. So this is great. In the end, it will look almost imperceptible. You probably won't be able to tell the difference that it wasn't painted with real oil in the end. But you will be able to build them up as well mm -hmm. and have a texture. We only start thinner because that's our underpainting, right, this week. And then we'll go thicker on top of it next week. So see how the, the canvas is disappearing, but it's still glowing from underneath? 
So where I went too much and I want light, I can use it, the brush again as an eraser with just water. And our canvas will show through, but it's still painted. Can you see that? So canvas shows through, but now it has a thin layer of paint. So it's all painted. You see the difference? Now it's rounding and it's painted. Same with the nose. I want to be more round and more highlighted in the front. So I'm removing with my water. This would be turpentine if it was regular oil. And you can use turpentine at home with this as well. Notice how the nose is starting to model. So how long does a thin layer like this take to dry? It will be dry by tomorrow. Oh. Or even tonight. But not like acrylic. So within the next two, three hours, you can keep modeling away and changing your mind. So if I didn't like something, I wanted to get rid of it. Okay, I'm going to stop at this point, but I'm just going to show you how to get rid of something. If I didn't like this line, it's gone. So it's not, all, it's not acrylic where everything is committed, right? And you're fighting against the plasticity. You see how easy it is to correct? If I wanted to, I want to use some of this, I could show you a little later demo. But if I really wanted to make changes, look how quickly I can do this. Right? You see that? It's, it's very much the oil, the plasticity and the fluidity of oil. And again, if I just did, now that it's... Yeah, because it seems like it doesn't dry. I mean, it's, is it as, the same slowness as regular oil, or is it it's a, the, little, a little faster? Okay, so it's the same oil paint. So what makes it dry faster or slower is the medium you use. Mm -hmm. So there's faster drying medium and slower drying medium. This is medium drying medium. So poppy <laughs> seed allows you to model, but I hate it when I come back next week and the painting is still wet. That's too long for me. Some people love it. It depends on what they're planning to do. I want to put the next layer. So this gives me an ability two, three days, and then I could put another layer, right? So I think this gives us a good start, and then we'll come back for the next layer later. Um, you have questions? What it, uh, would be the quickest drying medium? Um, they're actually the labeled when oh. for this for this water soluble paint. There's mediums that they sell specifically designed for them, and they'll say fast drying, slow drying, oh, okay. um, and in your box it probably came in with the medium, and it will tell you, and I can check. Mm -hmm. But this is the one that gives the luster and feeling like an oil paint. Mm -hmm. This is my go-to mm -hmm. poppy seed, and it's so inexpensive, as you know, it's like eight dollars online, and will last you a year. Mm -hmm. So this is awesome. Um, if I wanted to at this stage today, if you can, what I would also love you to do, I'm almost running out of paint in my palette, but I would love. I'm going to add just a little burnt umber. What I would love you to do, and you see how little paint I use. I mean, these will also be for a long time. I also want to set off the background quickly because it will allow me to see my face and not struggle against the light of the background that's stopping it. And also it will make me commit to my edges of my composition of my face. This could be quite loose, but it will make a big difference. I'm thinking hair here, right? So I'm kind of painting freely. And I would love, I'm running out of color on my palette. By that time, you would be adding more color, but I don't want to use up all your paint. So I would be using probably a little blue and a little bit of crimson to add, to push that background further into shape. And when it's stuck like this, I might use a little oil to make it more fluid. Here, I change my hand. Notice what big brush I have, but if my paint is at the edge, I have full control when I come to the edges, when I turn it sideways, do you see that? I can draw really beautiful controlled lines. So small brush doesn't mean more control. This type of brush gives you a lot of control even on a wide surface. And now here I could just kind of move the hairs. I could just suggest this so I'll know there'll be hair here. I hope this is helpful. 
And then if I had some darks, which I don't here, I would put like wild little couple of marks, right? To set up, oh, that's where the hair will be. Do you see how that brought the face out quickly? So background, within the first hour, I would definitely set the background in the back on both sides so that it comes forward. On this cheek in particular, even if I take all that mud from my palette right now and just set it up quickly, my light, which I haven't even painted, will start singing and pushing off the canvas on that cheek against whatever the color background, doesn't matter, just we're talking about value right now. You see how that's starting to read like light immediately? Right? And that helps me just go, oh, all of a sudden it starts to come to light. Right? You guys ready to try? Now, by, what, by this point, if your palette done like this, 